Uh, Doug O'Neill, I want to welcome you for extending yourself to be a guest with this important Breeders' Cup Classic coming up. You seem very relaxed, and I'm glad to see that. hear that. We, In studying you in this uh, situation, I found that we have one very important trait in common, um, our love of horses. We both started walking hots in high school, and that's about where it ends. Anyway, in 2006, you uh, trained Lava Man, won the Santa Anita Derby, the Hollywood Gold Cup, and the Pacific uh, Classic. In 2012, you trained Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner, I'll have another. In 2015, you, your horse won the Breeders' Cup, uh, Nyquist, the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, and earned the Eclipse Award for two-year-old male horse. In 2016, yeah, he had a perfect 8-8 eight and eight record at that time, and then went on to win the Kentucky Derby. Your record to date has been three American Classic winners, five Breeders' Cup wins, and the 2003 International Japan uh, cup or what, what it's called on dirt and 32 other major racing wins that adds up to date to over 2000 wins and earnings of over $5 million. I feel humble just to be able to get to you and have you be so cordial in your uh, response about how your horse is doing with the impending race coming on. I believe uh, your horse hot rod Charlie is one of the toughest horses in the race. You're racing for a $6 million purse, which is to be contested Saturday. November 6th. So welcome, Doug. Thank you. Thank you for all those nice, uh, kind words. And uh, that's a warm welcome. So I appreciate that. And, and, uh, and as you know, Doc, because you've been in the, the trenches, it, uh, it starts with the horse and then it takes the, the hot walkers, the grooms and the excess riders and the veterinarians and the, the, the shoers and everybody. So uh, I'm just blessed to be part of uh, a really solid team that um, is uh lucky enough to be connected with uh, Hot Rod Charlie this year. And and uh, we're real excited about uh, November 6th, that's for sure. I just want your your instinct about the race. I know who you're going to tell me the best horse in the race is. I think everyone kind of anticipates you're going to pick Hot, Hot Rod Charlie. But my question to you is, not to be overly critical, I think you, you have about four or five super contenders and the others are sleepers. They may work out okay, they may not. As you know, any horse could have a great day and any horse could have a bad day. I mean, in my era, Secretary, it was beat twice, even though he's remembered, at least by me, as the greatest racehorse for our generation. So anything can happen, and it could be the start in the starting gate. It could be the jockey. But sizing it up, who would you say is your greatest competition and or do you have a couple of aspects of each one that jumps out at you so that the viewing public says, well, Doug told us about this guy. He's a sleeper. He's going to come from behind, or he's going to be the first one out of the gate and hold the lead. Do you have any any thoughts on that? You know, my, I haven't really dove into the competition just yet. Obviously, Essential Quality is a horse that uh, uh, Hot Rod Charlie knows really well, and, and uh, he's a, an amazing horse that, uh, you know, he, his one loss was in the Kentucky Derby, and he didn't have the greatest of trips, so. Um, he ran a, a really gutsy uh, fourth place in, in that race. But, um, you know, you got some older horses, too, uh, like uh, Nick's uh, – was it Nick's Go? You know, I'm screwing up all these names. But, um, no, that's right. Nick, Nick's yeah. Go is a five-year-old, uh, yeah. trained by Brad Cox, yeah. and uh, he's supposed to have a lot of speed. Got a lot of speed. You got Medina Spirit, of course, who who is uh, – we're training along with out here in California, so he's obviously – um, a nice, nice three-year-old as well. So it's very contentious. There's a lot of speed signed up, it looks like, and, and um, we're excited and optimistic that uh, Hot Rod Charlie is versatile enough to adapt to it, however the race unfolds. So we think he's great. Uh, Flavian Pratt uh, as our uh, our jockey, that consistency is a, a huge plus as well. So it's, it's going to be a heck of a race. It's interesting that you – this year, I mean, I – I walked around uh, Belmont uh, a couple of days ago and just in general was talking to people. And, and this particular year has such an interest because of the backstories with Medina Spirit and Bob Baffert, because of Brad Cox jumping up with two horses, a three-year-old and then an older horse, Essential Quality and Nick's Go, and um, your horse. And then we've got some others. Max Player, Steve Asmussen is the winningest trainer of all time at this point. And Billy Mott, uh, his horse looks a little bit lighter on racing and credentials to the other horses, but this is a guy that has been a super and conditioner for years and certainly knows how to get the most out of a horse, especially looking back at Cigar, one of the greatest of all time 
uh, performances by horse. And then we've got a couple other Californians in there who you know better than I do, uh, uh, John, John Sadler, and you got John Gosman coming from uh, Europe in theories, and sheriffs coming in also from uh, California. I, I don't think they have as good a shot as you have, but the bottom line is on a, on a race day, any horse can become a monster if they feel right. 100%, yeah. And uh, like you say, that you mentioned a lot of trainers that have a tremendous team, tremendous barns, and when they get, uh, you know, uh, a big time horse like that, you, you know, they're, um, the horse is going to be as ready as they possibly can. So it is just a matter of, uh, uh, they're not machines, but them, uh, bringing their a game and, and having a good trip. And, and, uh, that includes us as well. So, um, yeah, the, these races, so much of it is, uh, uh, the buildup and the, and the excitement and, uh, you know, just trying to keep them injury free every day and, and have them going into the race 100 percent. So that's uh, easily said, but not always easy to do, easy to do. So we'll uh, as we speak, we're, we're we're excited. Good. And and your your opinion is that your horse is ready to go and you're you're happy with uh, the conditioning and the way he's feeling at this particular moment. Yeah, he's doing fantastic. He breathed seven eights uh, the other morning at Santa Anita and and. Uh, got a couple horses jumped in kind of mid work. So we got a, ended up being like a four horse team, which we was unexpected, but, um, uh, Flavian Pratt was on him and he was able to kind of scoot in between horses there and, um, kicked on down the lane and looked great. So cooled out really quickly and really well. So yeah, he, he's really coming into this race in good shape and coming off a, a good win in the Pacific or in the, uh, Pennsylvania Derby. So, um, yeah, we feel like we're coming in, uh, with good horse confidence, good human confidence. And, uh, uh, and this time we get to, to run in our own state, which, you know, one of the cool things about hot rod Charlie is he's had the ability to ship around with no problem. And, uh, so, you know, this time we'll be shipping from Sandy to Delmar, not a big ship, but, uh, we're, uh, hoping to continue his success on the road. And that's a track where you got your start as a hot walker, right? Very first, that's what uh, as my friends were all going to UCLA or Santa Monica Community College. Uh, I went to University of Del Mar, I say. So yeah, right. I went right to Del Mar, walking hot out of high school for, for Jude Feld. And um, yeah, and I've been blessed enough to work alongside horses uh, ever since. Well, the first place I walked hot, hots was for Johnny Campo at Belmont Park, and he said he he learned his craft uh, via selling newspapers on the sidewalks of uh, New York City. So, you know, talent comes from all different sources. And I believe that uh, the horsemen are a trade unto themselves and not given enough credit for the years that they put in working and studying and making mistakes and learning from the mistakes and moving forward. And also, like you said, the tremendous backup of staff that you have to have. The public doesn't realize that. they, You're, you're like the showman. You're like the, uh, the lead actor in... A movie but what about the rest of the cast when you have to sit there and look at the end of the film you go oh my god i can't believe so many people did this to make it happen 100 percent right and uh and the horses we learn so much from them don't we i mean it's a it's a constant uh daily uh education and, and uh they're 100 percent mirrors of us and and like you say there's so many men and women that uh have chosen to work alongside horses and and uh horses are uh you know, they, they demand a lot of uh, energy and a lot of effort. And uh, so you got to want to be there. You got to love it. And if you do, they'll give you everything they got. So it's a it's a it's a beautiful job if you want to even call it a job. And, and uh, you know, yeah, it is. It's a uh, it's a great community. Any backside you go to, as you know, Doc, it, it's a really tight knit community. And even though everyone, every barn wants to to win every race they're in, uh, you know, there's constant uh, fundraisers for anybody who's uh, down and out and, and uh, just everyone's kind of helps each other out and uh, really blessed to be part of the, the racing community. That's for sure. Well, I go back uh, far enough to remember Woody Stevens and he uh, he commented that what kept him young was looking forward to the next crop of yearlings every year. So true. Yeah, sure. we're, we're, same thing. I know they say you can't uh, you'll never commit suicide if you got to unraced uh, two-year-old in your barn that uh, gives you that hope. So good stuff. I have a very good relationship with Cordero, who 
was once talking to me during an interview about some new jockeys going into the Kentucky Derby. And he said, he says, my God, Doc, he says, when I went in the first time ever, he said, I think I hit the bathroom five times before I walked out. And I didn't have to go, but I thought I did. I was that nervous. So you've been there before. You've been in the Breeders' Cup. You've won several races. But this is uh, kind of a new experience for you to have a horse of this talent and, and pretty much the premier race of the whole Breeders' Cup series. How are your nerves doing? There's a lot of excitement, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I think most of uh, that kind of built up anxiousness uh, will probably hit uh, the day of the race. But uh, right now, most of the energy is just excitement and trying to keep uh, everything cold and tight and loose. And, and uh, the beauty of having a, a large barn like we do, there's so many things going on and it's you don't really get bogged down with just focusing on uh, on one horse. So uh, that helps keep you distracted. And uh, But, uh, you know, just knowing we got Eddie, the, the groom of Hot Rod Charlie, who's just does an unbelievable job. And, and um, you know, having and Johnny Garcia, his exercise rider, who uh, is just an, an unbelievable hand. He, he rode uh, uh, Nyquist and I'll have another for us. So he's just a real experienced, cool hand uh, exercise rider. So just grateful that uh, Hot Rod Charlie is surrounded by a lot of good people. And, and uh, uh, that, that gives me a lot of comfort and calm, that's for sure. Um, on another note, uh, outside of this particular race, uh, I haven't really concentrated on any others. Uh, uh, do you have any specific other race that you're kind of looking at and saying, wow, I, I wonder how this is going to turn out? I've been following this horse and thinking about how they're going to do. It could be one of your own. I'm, I'm not sure if you had any others in the classic at all, and not in the classic, in the Breeders' Cup at all, or if there's any others that you're just interested in the story behind that horse. Well, I, we've got another uh, a, a two-year-old colt by American Pharaoh named McKinnon, mm -hmm. uh, named after uh, Nathan McKinnon of uh, the Colorado Avalanche. He's shooting for the, the two-year-old uh, mile turf uh, boys. And uh, so we're excited about him. He's coming off a couple of nice wins. Um, but it's always, to me, that the, one of the most intriguing races on the card is the, the juvenile dirt, you know, just seeing how that race unfolds. Because a lot of times that gives you a little bit of a hint of how the, you know, the, the Derby and the, the Triple Crown races might unfold, uh, usually, especially this year when you see, you know, uh, Central Quality and um, the Mandolin and uh, uh, Midnight Bourbon and Hot Rod Charlie and a lot of those horses that competed in the uh, um, Breeders' Cup Juvenile last year uh, were very much part of a lot of the, the classics this year. So it's been pretty cool to see that class uh, evolve and, and mature to, together. This fellow, John Gaines, gets a tremendous amount of credit for coming up with the idea of the Breeders, uh, Breeders' Cup and to do the kind of things that it's doing and increasing the sport amongst all the tracks. Uh, I think that one name that I knew because I worked for him a little bit was uh, Nehrud, John Nehrud, and then his son, Jan. And, and I think they deserve some credit, too. That was a unique experience back in that era, and they had to do a lot of hard selling to get the tracks to agree to all this. And then how are we going to get the international horses over? So it must have been some hell of a, of a business uh, negotiation in the back room there to make this happen. But I think we all deserve, they all de deserve from us a, a, a sense of gratitude. hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, it's literally, it's the Super Bowl. you know, the end of the year eclipse awards are oftentimes, um, you know, reflected on uh, the, the results of the Breeders' Cup. So it's really, uh, was an incredible concept and idea and for them to put it into play and then for it to still be around, but it started in the 80s, right? 84, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was 80. I think they started talking about it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so, and then it happened in 84, something like that. It's incredible. Yeah, so credit to them. And, and uh, their legacy is is, uh, is ink, that's for sure. Well, Doug, you've been gracious with your time. And I know you must be crazy busy with everyone want to talk about to you about not only the big horse that you have, but all the other horses in the barn and all the different connections. Probably everyone's hawking you for tickets, and I can't blame them. Mm. But anyway, having said that, I thank you so much and, and wish you and Hot Rod Charlie the best. Thanks for having me, Dr. B. I love these shows. Thanks for having me. Okay, thanks. Take care.